Hi, I'm Minna Castillo-Cohen, and I'm the Director of the Office of Children, Youth, and Families at the Colorado Department of Human Services. We work on a number of different issues within this office, including child welfare, domestic violence, youth sexual health, and youth services, which folks may know as part of the juvenile justice system. And hi, everybody. I'm Perry May. I'm the Deputy Executive Director of Health Facilities at the Colorado Department of Human Services. I work over uh, all of our 24-7 operations, including the Veterans Community Living Centers, the Mental Health Institutes, our regional centers, and the Department of Youth Services. Um, but as this IMD issue has presented itself, I am uh, going to become involved in the uh, creation of a path forward on this just because my background is in running residential treatment programs uh, in the private sector. Um, so I'm excited to be here with you all and, and on this journey. Minna, when I started at CDHS, one of the first issues we talked about was implementing the Family First Act. What can you tell us about Family First? Certainly, yeah. When you first came to us, you were uh, a member of the Delivery of Child Welfare Services Task Force. And while that's focused on child welfare, uh, in totality, Family First was certainly one of the main topics of conversation, and that's because the Family First Prevention Services Act is a, a big new transformational law that is reshaping child welfare across the nation. And it really does impact all of our offices here within the um, Human Services Agency because it, it's a fundamentally new way of looking at how we serve families. It allows states to use that federal funding to provide evidence-based services to prevent removals. Previously, we could only use those federal funds if a child or youth was in foster care or in that out-of-home care setting. This is a really great thing as it aligns with Colorado's priority to serve kids and families together. And when it's not safe to do so and foster care is necessary, Family First incentivizes care within a kinship family or foster family. And Family First also introduces two changes that directly impact our congregate care settings. Right. Family First calls for the development of more specialized congregate care programs which focus on the individualized needs of children and youth, including qualified residential treatment programs or QRTPs. We'll be referring to them uh, moving forward. That's what we're going to dive into today because we expect and frankly we need today's residential child care facilities to become QRTPs, but this raises concerns about IMDs, which stands for Institutes of Mental Disease. Mina, how would you, uh, how would you define an IMD? I'm going to read the exact language from the 1965 federal law that created IMDs. Uh, because it's very specific. An IMD is a hospital, nursing facility, or other institution of more than 16 beds that is primarily engaged in providing diagnosis, treatment, or care of persons with mental diseases, including medical attention, nursing care, and related services. Whether an institution is an institution for mental disease is determined by its overall character as that of a facility established and maintained primarily for the care and treatment of individuals with mental diseases, whether or not it is licensed as such. And with the passage of Family First, states have grappled with the question of whether our QRTPs would be considered IMDs. And that's really important because if a facility is designated as an IMD, it can no longer access the Medicaid funding that, that it needs to cover those behavioral health costs or the physical, dental, and pharmaceutical costs for the children and youth in their care. And in Colorado, our residential child care facilities receive approximately 19.7 million in Medicaid funding every year for those services. And while it wasn't the intent of Family First, the creation of the QRTP set up a conflict in that federal law. To be in alignment with Family First, again, to be in alignment and in compliance with a law, those RCCFs need to transition to QRTPs so that we can use them for placements when kids uh, show that they have that high level of need for treatment services. And because of that primary focus on treatment, becoming a QRTP could mean that risks that IMD designation and the loss of Medicaid funding. The federal agency that oversees Medicaid is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS for short. And they have largely left it up to states to decide whether their facilities qualify as IMDs. Right. And I know that you and your team have done a lot of work and research in partnership with HICPUF, as well as learning from other states. I know this has included visits out to several residential centers with HICPUF 
to look at those facilities and and make some um, some uh, develop some understanding for how our facilities operate and how they may or may not be IMDs. Can you bring us up to speed on what you've done, what we've done as a state to address this potential conflict? Sure, uh, CDHS and our Healthcare Policy Financing, which is HICPUF, they administer that Medicaid in Colorado. We've been working together uh, in close partnership on this issue since November of 2019. And as you said, we did conduct some site visits and, and we wanna say thank you to those providers who allowed CDHS and HICPUF to come in. We were really working to conduct a careful analysis of the federal IMD criteria and CMS guidance and back it up against um, what we what we have here in Colorado. And so conducting those site visits to individual residential facilities helped us gather more information. We talked with other states and jurisdictions and explored every possible argument that would allow Colorado to confidently move forward with the QRTP without risking an IMD designation for those residential childcare facilities. We were actually uh, moving along the same pace as California, uh, who submitted a letter uh, to the Medicaid agency trying to create a blanket statement that QRTPs were not IMDs. And in July of 2020, uh, that letter that they submitted uh, actually received a response. And, and many of the same arguments that we would have made in Colorado um, were actually uh, sort of denied. CMS's response to California made it clear that states must adhere to the IMD statute in their designation of facilities. So it has to be done on an individual basis. CMS considers QRTPs of more than 16 beds to be IMDs. There is no blanket statement that can be made. So our, our agencies have come to the joint conclusion that any existing RCCF with more than 16 beds that seeks to be a QRTP uh, could be considered an IMD by CMS. So even those with campus settings or multiple locations, uh, again, would be at risk. And CMS's interpretation also carries implications for existing facilities. Based on CMS's guidance, RCCFs that have more than 16 beds are also at risk of being designated as IMDs, even if they do not pursue QRTP designation. Before joining CDHS, uh, I worked in the private sector as a behavioral health provider, providing residential, in-home, outpatient services to children and adolescents. And I was also part of a trade organization nationally called the National Association for Children's Behavioral Health. And in those meetings each year, there was work uh, being done and strategy being developed to try and address the IMD issue and potentially have it removed from um, federal regulations, uh, but those were unsuccessful. So we have known for quite some time in the provider community that this has been hanging out there and would at some point have to be addressed in one way or the other. And currently we're hearing from CMS how this has to be addressed. So working with HICPUF, we realized that in order to truly mitigate this risk, we need to begin proactively adapting our practices and infrastructure now in order to serve a smaller number of children, youth, and residential facilities. And partnership is really key here. We have providers with decades of experience taking care of kids and giving them the stability and services that they need, and we want to retain that experience and passion as we shift the continuum of care in Colorado. We also want to seize on the opportunity to improve our services to kids and families so we can provide services earlier and in the home. So although this is a very scary situation for many in terms of developing a new and more comprehensive continuum of care in Colorado, it also is an opportunity for us to do exactly that, to build a more robust qualified continuum of care for kids to ensure that they are not in residential care longer than they need to be and with their families as soon as possible um, after they uh, complete their treatment in a residential facility. Our website, coforkids.org backslash family first has a lot of information about family first generally and some new resources that we've added about IMDs and the next steps because we know that we need to get to work soon to identify a path forward, CDHS will be convening a future congregate care work group to explore how we can adapt our practices, our rules, um, our laws, our infrastructure, and serve a smaller number of children in, in our congregate care facilities when they need to be served uh, in those treatment facilities. Again, there's more information on co4kids.org backslash IMD if you're interested in that specifically.
Perry, I know you're going to be a part of the conversations as well as other leaders like Anne Marie and myself from the department. Yes, I definitely am going to be and want to be part of this work given my background in this area. And I want to again invite everyone in Colorado's provider community to join as well. We need your experience, skills, and passion to help us create a system that reflects the needs of our children, youth, and families. I'm confident that in working together and brainstorming solutions, we will uh, find a path forward to creating a very comprehensive continuum of care here in Colorado. Thanks for watching everyone and look forward to talking with you soon.